Welcome to Steve's World UK. Today I'm at the Theatre Royal in Drury Lane, London. So today, the world premiere of Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman TV series for Netflix is part of my world. So on any other day, if you come to this theatre, you're expecting to see Frozen. But I wouldn't bring any kids tonight because tonight is the premiere of Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman. So luckily, I've got a ticket for the event, so come with me and let's take a look at my first experience of a premiere. The Gentleman is an upcoming television series created by Guy Ritchie. It is a spin-off of Ritchie's 2019 film of the same name. Featuring a new class of criminal, The Gentleman premieres from the 7th of March and features Theo James, K.S. Godelario, Daniel Ings, Jolie Richardson, Giancarlo Esposito and Guy Ritchie is once again reunited with Vinnie Jones. So I've collected my very posh in Boss The Gentleman premiere ticket for this Netflix event where Netflix requests the pleasure of my company on Tuesday the 5th of March 2024. Doors open at 5 p.m. Guy Ritchie will be introducing the premiere followed by the first episode showing and the cast and director Q&A session after the world premiere of episode number one. First up though, I managed to gate crash in some way, shape or form this red carpet event to catch a sneak preview of some of its stars. Don't tell anyone.
big set before this. How are you feeling being out here on stage? Yeah, good. <laughs> um, do you mind me asking you a little bit in terms of for you as a writer and director, what the kind of luxury to take these characters and this story down, you know, a much deeper kind of route as opposed to, you know, the confines of a feature film time-wise? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, you feel that this could run and run, and the characters take on their own life. So all you've got to do is establish a character, and then they create their own voice, and then couple that with an actor, they're off to the races. So you could go and go and go, if you so chose. It actually turned out to be easier than I anticipated. It's not quite like making a movie, because as I say, once you establish a character, the character's off. When you say could go and go and go, it's not on until Thursday, but does that mean there might be more to come down the road? But, uh, listen, I, selfishly, I make these things for me, because I enjoy doing them so much, and I enjoy working with the cast. The entire conspiracy of filmmaking is my pleasure and my indulgence and I can't believe actually there's an audience for it and I'm very grateful for the audience so thank you. Thank you for indulging us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking a seat. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Maybe not. Guy will be joining us again as will a number of the cast on the stage as we have a a short Q&A following the episode. Once again, are you still to meet him in the show? Max Beasley is with us. feel great about that here and how the audience responded. Or did you watch it? You, I did watch yeah, it actually, yeah. Good, good, good is it nice to get that response from an audience being in the same room as them and hearing how they react to it? Well the truth is that's the first time I've watched it. So <laughs> <laughs> these things are a bit like cakes. You put them in the oven and it takes so long for them to rise and then eventually you pull out, you open the oven after nine months or whatever it is and, and then there it is there's your cake that's something different right? <laughs> <laughs> truth with you know all the grading and the sound and everything that's the first time i've watched it and it's you know and well i, well, I, I was having a lovely time <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing but yeah i was having a lovely time we have this extraordinary collection of hugely talented people on the stage and it's you know it's just some of the cast in this show is that part of the joy of being the director is putting this wonderful kind of circus together in a way. This thing is about the cast, so that that works because of that. <laughs> um, so I I tip my cap at the cast. <laughs> Theo, I'm going to start with you. Congratulations! It's uh, I, well, I, we can see why you run away from this family pretty quickly, sort of thing. How much is he enjoying being back, and how much did you enjoy kind of exploring this character? I thought you were going to say how much of it is real. <laughs> uh, a lot of it, when it comes to Dan, uh, he, he basically is that person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was it was delightful. You know, it, the the it, the fascinating conceit behind it was always the thing that interested me most: the the melding of aristocracy and the underworld and how those things collide in the most bombastic way done by Monsieur Ritchie here. Uh, those two things were always fascinating to me. You know, the, the Britain is so defined by class and, and we love it and hate it for various reasons, but defining it in the fun and the melee of this was really fascinating for me. It's great to see you and Kaya together as well. I'm really interested to see kind of how that relationship progresses throughout the, se the season. Listen, Susie, what a character. She, you can tell you're just having so much fun with her. But what I find really interesting is we, where we find her, there, I feel that there's so much to her backstory that is kind of definition of where we find her now. Is that something you thought about in terms of kind of when you come to the character? Yeah, definitely. I mean, her, what I loved about her 
I very rarely get to portray women that are already at the top of the game when you meet them. It's always kind of a young woman finding her way in life. And what I loved about Susie is we meet her and she's a boss. Mm. She's good at her job. She can run shit. She knows exactly what she's doing. And I did base her, and a lot of my friends are here tonight, and I based her on all their mums. <laughs> so a few of my friends have got dodgy families, that's the right. <laughs> and the dads were like the geezers, and, but the mums were the ones that I was scared of. They're the ones that know exactly what's going on. They don't have to say too much. They look immaculate, mm -hmm. and they are fucking terrifying. <laughs> That's who I based her on. I can't wait for them to see the show. I know, sorry guys. <laughs> um, Daniel. Oh my God. I mean, there's a reason why he's got the kind of the name, the liability. But how much joy did you have in playing his character? Before you answer that, the slip at the end there when he comes out the house. Yeah, I fucking stacked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the, the, third, that was the first take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was the first take. I think wasn't it, guy that came out. Which is Actually, we got told off by the duke whose house we shot it in. Oh yeah, <laughs> shit. we we were under strict instructions to stay off the grass. Yeah. And any skid marks, <laughs> we, 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 I mean that that skid cost us about ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> At least it was those kind of skid marks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got a new lawn <laughs> out of it. <laughs> we talked to you about about Freddie and about kind of just. I mean, playing with his character and just, I mean, that's just the first episode with him. Yeah, I mean, I had a blast because he's just a wild man, but I think, you know, he, he, when, when you get a character like that, you think, well, it's sort of go big or go home. And, uh, you know, and Guy's so good at kind of straddling that line of like, when, when you can push it, when he pulls it back in, you know, um, <laughs> which he, he had to do on a fairly regular basis. Um, push and pull. But, uh, um, you know, I had a blast with it. But I think also the, the, the fun of doing it is like finding the darkness with it as well, yeah. you know what I mean? And, so, and I think, you know, we've talked about this before, for Theo's character and for, for Susie as well, really, for the two of them to want to sort of um, bother uh, helping this fucking idiot brother out, <laughs> there has to be a kind of, um, I don't know, sort of sweetness there or something that you're like, yeah. There's a little boy there inside, but I had fun. <laughs> so that last sequence was, you know, it, it just became a barren rhythm. But it all conspired together, the the actor's performance, um, the editor's rhythm, the director's rhythm, just the conspiracy of events. Um, you know, these scenes sort of direct themselves, and that's an example of a scene that directs itself. But the music as well, which is pretty astounding, it just adds so much grandeur and tension and build to it as well. Yeah, and sadly I can't take the credit for that. <laughs> oh, oh well. We'll move on then to Julie. Um, <laughs> um, Lady Sabrina, I mean, I feel like there's there's a lot that we don't know yet. I feel like we're going to we're gonna go down a whole journey with this character and she's going to unveil some stuff that... What can you tell us about her that we may be coming to later in the season? I, I, you know, I, I actually don't know because I haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> I, 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 uh, what? What? Yeah. Is there? Yeah. Okay. She's amazing. Yeah. She's fucking gorgeous and, and an incredible actor and a, a little bit more of the female flair that we needed in the show. And that was super that grateful that you were there. Very it's really good. Cool. Exactly. It's great. <laughs> How would you describe her then, Julie? Sabrina. What? How would you describe her? What? How would you describe her? Um, do you know what? I, I'm really at pains to describe her. I, I think Guy, I loved what you said, Guy, about the rhythm. <laughs> I'm just going to deflect. She's just going to deflect. Wait, don't worry. Really, you want to edit, so Julie. Great to see everyone's work. Seriously, I haven't seen it. That was the first time I watched it. And I remembered, you know, that when we were doing the whole scene of the will, it was just so exciting to watch the tension. You did it again and again and again, didn't you? And, and a lot of it, you probably don't know this, a lot of it was improvised. Dan just going off on one and, and it was just, it was a joy to, it was a joy to watch her. It's a joy to watch now. I loved watching it. Thank you. Hi Ray. Follow that. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, tell us about Bob 
Bobby? Because, you know, the appeal for you of being kind of part of this this kind of ensemble and part of the story of being in, in Guy's world, what was, was was that the appeal of kind of taking this on? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just still blown away by watching that, to be honest with you. Um, performances and everything, the story. Um, I wish I could do my bit again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's the, the the joy for me was it, it's it was so different working with Guy because it's you get things thrown at you and I think as long as you're on your game as long as you learn what you've got to learn the night before then when you come to work the next day you can take anything on board and I haven't worked with a director like that before you know uh, you usually you can rehearse it you can go through it you can learn your lines. You can change one or two things, but you know we found ourselves changing quite a bit as we were going along, and for the better. You know that's the important thing. You don't just change things because you're bored with it. Mm -hmm. You change it for the better, and that's what I I came away with, and the, uh, it, I was pleased with it. Yeah, yeah. Guys, I mean, where you normal work, normally work with encouraging kind of improvisation when you're casting play. Well, right now, you're asleep. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just gazing at him. I'm just gazing at the spectacles that's going on. They all look very smart with spectacles. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? That's fine. I'm just, just from what we were saying about kind of, you know, you'd never worked in the way that you worked before. With, you know, to, to still be learning as an actor is amazing. But encouraging improvisation, did you always work like that where you encourage the, that kind of play? Yeah, I think as long as you've got a good roadmap and then if you can improve it on the day, but a lot of that's down to the actor. So if the actor is flexible and they have their own ideas and they get in the rhythm too, yeah. there's a theme to this rhythm, um, then you know you can play. Um, and I've wanted to work with Ray for a long time and it was you know, a wonderful experience for me. You're going to see a lot of Ray in this, by the way. Yeah. Ray's rather wonderful, yeah. Well, we've got to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy Ray. <laughs> Giancarlo, it's so great to have you here and um, this, this, Woo! yeah, it's so great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's, it's truly an honor and, and, a, and a pleasure to be here. And um, this process of, of making this um, was so free and, and enjoyable and it's something that I'll always remember. Uh, I think, you know, part of what I think about that's so special about um, the way this works and the humility that, that Guy exemplifies uh, here tonight and, and through my meetings with him is that he, he stretched my imagination and my brain and conversation that was 45 minutes to an hour when you think you're going to go in and talk about, before you're shooting on the day, um, about the scene today and you talk about life and children and family and aristocracy and money and privilege and all these things and all of a sudden it, it changes and turns into did we dig deep enough and, and Guy comes up with some new ideas and attitudes and all the time in the back of my mind I'm thinking about well what about today, what about today, what about today and I let all that go and I'm stretched and challenged to think in a new way and all of a sudden new pages come out and I'm not even stressed about having the ability to do it because I'm, I'm in a new place so it sort of tears down all the building blocks of what you think or what you've done in the past that you've built that this is the way I do it and all of a sudden it becomes the way we do it. And I felt so included, and I felt so collaborative, and I didn't feel nervous at all about getting in there and doing what we do. And it was just an honor to be able to do it in this way. It, it, it breaks all conventions and it allows you to be free. And isn't that what it's about, is to be free and creative. Stanley has this wonderful kind of suave and calm exterior, but I know there's a part of me that feels that there's there's kind of a lot going on behind the scenes that we don't really know about, but we may well be told more about as the season goes on. Do you mind talking to us a little bit about Uncle Stan and how you perceive him and his intentions, I guess? Well, I perceive him as being someone who's really graceful and intelligent and smart, but also someone who has um, a love of history and uh, someone who has the wealth and means to get what he wants, but he's careful and he's respectful. And he's someone who comes from America, and I'm, I, I seem to be the only American in this cast. Um, uh, and Guy spoke about you know, knowing someone uh, who had this nature and this acumen. And I, I listened to him very carefully, uh, because he's someone who is graceful, patient, cordial, 
and, and the British are that way. And, and so this, this seems to be a piece that's a perfect collision of, of this aristocratic culture and nature, uh, but also of not only criminality, but of family and humanity or non-humanity. And, and so to me, that tells a story of a bigger picture of our world, in, in, encompassed in this very gritty, edgy, funny, um, overlord, underlord show. And, and so to me, I was fascinated by this. And I had to, like, when the guy finally had these pages pumped out and said, you know, can you, can you go learn this? And he turned, how long do we have? In 10 minutes. And, and he said, do you want me to put it on boards for you? And I was like, well, what, what are boards? I don't know what that is. He said, I can, I can write it out for you. And I said, no, 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 I got this, I got this. Because I'm, I'm here to be in service to the writing and to the overall vision of what the piece is, if I believe in it. And if I believe in it fully and commit to it fully and completely, then there's no fear. And I learned so much from this process that it really, it was thrilling to me. And now seeing the end process and seeing, being here with all these masters of what they do is, is a further inspiration. And isn't that what it's about? To be inspired by what we see, to have fun, to be entertained, but also to have something underneath the undercurrent of it is, is a special thing because it has us look at our world and where we come from in a different way. So kudos, man. Yeah. Can we just have you talk all night because you are not class? <laughs> well, Max. Bye bye. <laughs> Max, your character has the has the synonym the promoter. And as we've seen in that first episode. Um, the boxing world is very much in the landscape of, of some of these characters. So what, what can you tell us about your character, Henry, that we're going to meet farther down the line? Well, I play Henry Collins, who comes into the show a little bit later on. Uh, and um, he's a East London boxing promoter, uh, but he's also um, a slightly sociopathic, psychotic, maybe, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and, uh, but a subtle, a subtle um, uh, manipulator, mover and groover. Uh, and um, there is some connection with this man here. Um, and, but again, to your point, um, initially wanting to do this show, um, I was fortunate enough to work with Guy just very briefly on, on one of his movies about a year and a half ago. And um, <clears throat> what I loved about the process was, it's on you, it's on you. You know, you've got to swing with what's going on because he's, he's quite a, Eclectic, ethereal genius. Um, I will say that to your face, Commander. Um, Did you say yummy? But he's like. No, he said genius. Genius. <laughs> no, but but uh, and I actually wanted to work with Guy and and and, and uh, Guy directed the first two, but then I worked with uh, Iran Creedy and, and, and David Caffrey, who are also both terrific directors. Um, uh, I wanted to work with Guy. I wanted to work with Giancarlo. I wanted to work with Raymond, who I've known for about thirty years. Um, and unfortunately, we, we we're all sort of individual. That we, we represent the individual darkness, the three elements, perhaps, of the show. Um, but, but, but the process that I do want to touch on the guy, which is why as actors, if anyone gets a chance to work with you, you must. It's kind of like it, Miles Davis calling you as a jazz musician, and if you go on stage, he'll say to you, we're going to play Carnegie Hall Friday night, and we're going to open up with a very basic uh, all blues or um, uh, blackbird. It's going to be very simple. And Max, you're going to comp on the vibraphone, nothing too crazy. And then you walk out on stage, and he just looks at you and goes, no, we're playing Giant Steps or Stella by Starlight, you're going to solo for the first four hours, go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the test, you know, it's, it's, it's a new element, it's a new tool to you as an actor, and <clears throat> if you can get into that groove with him, it's, a, it's an amazing experience, and it's, a, it is, it's something that I, I really, really have enjoyed doing, and I'm, just, I'm so so proud to be a part of this show you know all of the the performances i think are absolutely terrific and uh, it's just great to be a part of it thanks max <laughs> guy me again sorry um why did you just look before we finish up why did you want to kind of go further with this world you know in terms of these new characters and kind of delve into it more what was it about it that kind of really kind of i don't know I'd quite like Giancarlo to answer that, really. <laughs> uh, by the way, that was magnificent, Giancarlo. Oh, thanks. I have a theory about it. We've got it on tape, don't worry. We've got it on tape. 
<laughs> but actually, I think everything that he said was the answer. I think it, it addresses all of the aforementioned that Giancarlo um, spoke so eloquently about. And I think all of those subjects are interesting. Mm. And if you're, I, none of this is possible without uh, a talented and experienced cast. So, I mean, it, none of it's, they understood everything that was going on. I, I, it, it's a collaboration between artists, as, as it were. And there, there are so many um, different expressions of creativity and things that are worth exploring. It, it, it's just my pleasure to be part of this, and I hope it's a pleasure for them too. Do you think there'll be more? Well, you've got eight hours of this, so. <laughs> On Thursday. See, see how you feel. On Thursday. <laughs> On Thursday. We're all glued. We're all glued. We want more. And listen, thank you all so, so much for being here and coming up and chatting us too. <laughs> that's going to do it for today thank you for joining me for this once in a lifetime opportunity and certainly a tick off my bucket list if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on great future content from steve's world uk until next time be safe be good be kind and be careful it takes 24 hours for the world to turn once but only two seconds to like or subscribe to see great future content from Steve's World UK.